Welcome back to another Flywheel Films video and welcome to beautiful Northwest Arkansas. We are right here in War Eagle, right by the War Eagle Bridge. This is a really gorgeous area of the country that not many people have really visited, but this is where Austin, my brother, and our friend Jeff live. Now, Jeff has been on this channel before. He was a Miata owner, an NC Miata, NC Special Edition, NC2 Special Edition Miata owner, and he sold it and he now has a hot hatchback. So we're going to explore that story a little bit. We've actually done a recent story with our friend Jared, who sold his hot hatchback for a Miata. Kind of interesting. And we're going to talk about this sweet Veloster N. Three doors, three pedals. What a freaking cool car. Let's get into it. Jeff, we have two doors on this side, and if we if we come around to this side, it has one driver-oriented large door. You get the coupe side on the driver's side, and the passengers have their two doors. And then, like Jordan said, three pedals and a stick. The only way. How it should be. <laughs> so uh, we have in front of us a 2022. 2022, 2022, last year they came out. Last year of the Veloster N. And we'll talk a little bit here in a second about why that's uh, important and a good thing. Um, and then it's of course in red, which I actually really like the red. You don't see a lot of red. I feel like you see a lot of like the baby blue. See a lot of the baby blues and the whites and the blacks the whites, out. Yeah. I do feel like the red was one of the lesser seen colors. So it did kind of pull me in originally. Yeah, which is super, super cool. I like the red a whole lot. And then Jeff hasn't really done a lot to his car yet. That will be changing very soon. Um, you just recently threw an intake on, but that's like the only mod in Through the, the last intake, year. I've been trying to hold off on <laughs> modifying this car. Um, when my buddy with an Elantra in first told me about him, one of the things that pulled me in was, he said from a push of a button, you go from a stock car to what feels like a full bolt-on yeah, car. Which is and, really cool that Hyundai was able to figure that out. Because yeah. I, I wholeheartedly agree. In driving, uh, I've driven both the uh, Veloster N and the Kona N, and they both definitely feel like a modified car from the factory, which yes. is really cool. And as a car guy, you really appreciate that. But yeah, so we have 2022 Veloster and last year of it in red. And then we'll check out the interior here in a second too. But the 2022 is significant because it is the last year they threw the performance pack in as like standard, correct? Yeah, everything pretty much came fully optioned in 2022. So I've got the lane keep assist. Um, it's got the electronic LSD. It came with the performance tire. I mean, every upgrade you could have for it, it came with it. And then one of the coolest things is the freaking, you can't really see it because it's bright out, but the end lights up on the seats, but the seats are a whole lot better than the uh, previous years. They're more of like a bucket. Quite a bit more feeling. bolstering on the side. Yeah. Reminded me a lot actually of the, uh, huh, there's a Fiesta there, of the Fiesta ST Recaros. They feel very, very similar to those, which are some of my favorite seats ever. I have a lot of people ask me if the seats are comfortable because they look so much more like a racing seat. And I've put a racing seat in the said NC Miata. Yeah. And a six hour road tri trip in the racing seat was painful. Yeah. I was in pain the whole way home. I drove this home from Colorado, totally fine. Yeah. No back pain we, We've whatsoever. taken this on road trips up to Missouri, like five hours each way, super yeah. comfy. Very comfy Super seats. comfy. So, yeah, I think the biggest quirk with the Veloster N is the fact that it is a three-door hatchback yeah. and not a, uh, a two-door or four-door. It, it's this um, goofy alien spaceship of a car. Yeah, and like it's really <laughs> interesting to see the, the size of the, the driver's side door is, it's huge. It's such a <laughs> large door, yeah. but it actually is really nice because it makes getting in and out super, super easy. It does outside of if you're parking in a really tight parking this space, the bigger door, There's, like you'll see on the sedans, they turn into cars like an S5 or something. Yeah. It could, that's difficult, but I will say this is like a car I would say optimized for carrying three people. Yeah. Because if you have four, the person in the back has to get over and then like scooch over to the other seat, which is kind of funny. <laughs> Crawling across the back seat is not great. Austin has been all the way across the have, back seat and sit. I have. So decently it's, comfortable. It's a, it's a really nice size uh, second row in this actually, but the the getting in and out is. Uh, you gotta kind of bend the head in. But once you're like, in, you're in you've good. got, I mean, you know, the headroom goes up from the side quite yeah. a bit. <laughs> so yeah, we're going to talk a little bit here in a second. We're going to take it for a drive and we're going to go through Jeff's kind of recent vehicle ownership history. 
and how he ended up with this beautiful car and uh, how why he sold his Mazda Miata a couple of years back um, and talk a little bit about the NC Miata that he had. I think it was actually featured on the channel briefly. Yes. Um, we'll, we'll, so we'll probably either link that video somewhere or throw up some, some B-roll from it while we're talking. But yeah, we're going to take it for a spin and talk a little bit about why this is the car he ended up with. And I think it's it fits his... I don't know, season of life perfectly right now. It does. And uh, I'm super stoked to see what he's going to do with it, though, because he does have some plans. I think you said stuff happening maybe as soon as, like, tomorrow. Tomorrow. The last <laughs> bit I need to do, the install, comes in tomorrow. Yeah. So tuning software comes in tomorrow. So if you're interested in seeing more Veloster and content, definitely drop a comment below. Let us know. Uh, we're trying to feature some cars that are not Miatas on the channel. Um, so let us know if you like it. But, yeah, let's go take it for a spin. Wow, rear cross-traffic alert. Yeah, it's got all the alerts. All the bells and whistles. Crash collision sensing. I'll tell you when a vehicle's pulling away. So the clutch is a unique thing. It's different than an automatic. <laughs> <laughs> I'm leaving. <laughs> that's, that's making another video. Oh, so, <laughs> Veloster in... Hyundai is doing a lot of things right lately. They are. Really just the fact that the inline, well, no, no, not inline, in, in. exists. Yes. I hate that. That's a whole other video debate and podcast topic on how inline, ST line, GT line, all that needs to stop. Well, and I don't know if you know this, but the Sonata inline now has the 2.5 turbo, which is a bigger engine that's in this. <laughs> but it's not the Sonata N, it's the N line. Oh my so they're gosh. Getting, they're getting messy over there. Well, let's just say I'm glad you have this. I think this is my favorite in car because it's the most unique, interesting looking car. Um, I agree. To me. And I like, I do buy cars based on looks probably more than some people. I just like to have the weird, quirky things, but. Uh, I'm uh, in the same boat as you. I think maybe that's how we both ended up in an NC Miata for a while. <laughs> yeah. So let's talk about your brief history. I mean, the kind of clickbaity part of the video was he sold his NC for a hot hatch, but technically you had some things in between. I did. Tell I did. me. So um, I've always wanted to own a Miata, much like every car guy on the planet. I've known this guy over here for a long time. I've been watching him with his Miata. He's loved it. And... I started asking him about it, and it, if you follow this channel, you've been sold on the NC by Jordan, so you know how easy it is to happen. <laughs> so I bought an NC. Um, I'm big into modifying. That's that's my jam. It, it doesn't feel like it's your car until you modify it to me. So I did, uh, let's see, full bolt on. So I had the Morso coolant tank. I had the full exhaust. I had coilovers, sway bars, roll, roll bar. I took it to a track. I had it on some sticky summer tires. It was awesome. You did a lot with it. And for people who don't know, it was the 2011 Special Edition in that cool, darker gray color. The 2011 Special Edition had two different gray options. You had the really sleek, dark one. A sparkling mica, I want to say, something yeah, like that. Something. Yeah, it was, a, it was a really cool car. You'd get a really green hint to it in the, in the sunlight, yep. which was pretty cool. So um, then you sold it. And then I sold it. Why? Because <laughs> I had that car and the thought was to make it a track car, but at the same time, I was having quite a bit of success building uh, an Audi. Um, I had an Audi A3 for a while, and then I upgraded to an S3. And the S3, on the build I was going with, was getting close to about 500 all-wheel horsepower, which feels quite a bit different than uh, flooring it in the NC Miata did. Yep. And um, as much as I loved having the Miata, being split between two separate builds of cars at the same time, felt like I was hindering myself towards getting to either goal I wanted to be at. <laughs> so, so, so instead of splitting yourself between two different builds, you just bought two Audis. Yeah, so then I was, <laughs> so sales were going well at the time, and I thought, <laughs> I've, I love the matching garage. You, these brothers are all about the two-car garage, two very different cars. I love the matching garage. <laughs> you walk um, out and there's two A3s. So I had two S3s, S3s for a short sorry, period yeah. of time. And um, one was to remain stage two or simpler, which uh, you know got it into the mid-300 wheel range, all-wheel drive, which is a lot of fun. And then the, uh, the other car was to be the track car. But that car started breaking my heart. Um, yeah. 
in, in a chapter of life with enough heartbreak as it was. Yep. I, let's see, all-wheel drive system broke. I fixed that. And fixing that, um, the clutches broke. Yep. So once I got the clutches corrected, the fuel system had sat with E85 for so long that the fuel system had failed. Yep. So after thousands on clutches, I then had to do a new gas tank, new charcoal canister, new fuel line. The fuel line finally got filled. Um, after getting that all figured out, I unfortunately hired someone who, whose life went off the rails with drugs to work on my car. Mm. I didn't want to do the fuel pump install, and so I hired someone else to do it. They broke my canister without telling me. I fought that for about four months before figuring out what the problem was. Yep. We finally got the fueling done. Tuning was almost done and the rear differential blew up on my way to go do my last set of data logging. And uh, I thought, I got to step away from this car. <laughs> it's just not gonna stop hurting me. So, so some people give up drugs, some people give up drinking, some people give up Audis. I had you to give up, up the Audis. You gave up Audis, uh, which is funny actually. We, we had a recent video with our friend Ethan who sold his NC Miata for an Audi. Um, <laughs> that's just the trend, trend I think, so. Their downpipe two numbers are very enticing. And then he just gave up his Audi to go to a Mazda, but that's a different story, not a sports car. Uh, you gave up Audis and went to Veloster Inn. A front wheel drive hot hatch. Front wheel drive hot hatch. You came out to Colorado to buy this, which is the last time I saw this. Yeah. Uh, and honestly, I was like, this is so freaking cool. We had in some canyon roads. Granted, the weather wasn't amazing, which is such a bummer. It was rainy. But still, and this car actually looked phenomenal with the clouds and stuff in the background. Like, I'm not usually a red car person, but this red is pretty fun on this car. Like, it, is. it puts the hot in hot hatch. <laughs> and just, oh. That also just helps. Cheering, yeah, the exhaust helps. Everything about this helps. It is almost 300 horsepower, and you know, after tuning, it will be, at least at the crank, uh, wheel horsepower will be upper 200s, which is just such a good amount of power for this thing, I think. And I actually like these tires more. I'm like selfishly testing out your tires because you have the Michelin a pilot sport uh all season um i think that's why i saw it yeah all season four it, it was the most aggressive all season version of the pilot yeah sport. There so, so many versions ps as4 um yeah. and i think they're actually pretty pretty awesome and they, they they hold their ground fine and you're not really you don't want to push your car hard in fact you had a major issue on this road one time it wasn't your fault you no. were you were passenger in a stupid Miata driver. Passenger in an NB Miata driver's car with no roll bar and they went off the off the road and their hard top flew over our heads and oh my gosh 60. It wasn't good. Terrifying. <laughs> but this car does it for me. As far as like a single car solution, even the fact that it has like the coupe look on one side, the like two door looking hot hatch on the other side, and it's comfortable but still sporty, like as a single car solution, like you said, me and Austin love the two car solution thing, yes. but as a single car, this really intrigues me. And I don't know if you, have you guys talked about many of the, the modes or anything in here? No. Have not gone into the modes yet. So that was a huge selling factor for me getting into this car. Um, so I've had the Audi S3s. They come with mag ride from the factory. Yeah. Uh, it blows around 60,000 miles. Cool. So I've experienced, um, you know, new Audi mag ride, blown Audi mag ride, and Audis on coilovers. <laughs> uh, I, had, I had Bilstein 16-way adjustables, and I can tell you that from a push of a button on this car, it goes from softer than the mag ride to harder than the Bilsteins, and that is incredible to be able to do that. That's so cool, and it makes me jealous of having, you know, I can adjust my damping on my Meister R Zeta CRD coilovers in the Miata, but, takes a little bit of time. That's a bit of time and effort. So I just leave it on relatively stiff. Uh, whereas this is just like, with a button, you can adjust. And that's just really modern car things. I mean, Volkswagen does that really well. Yep. A lot of modern sports cars have that capability, the adjustable dynamic kind of suspension systems. It is technically maybe one more thing that could go wrong, but um, Hyundai is also famous for pretty good warranty and stuff, so. It is, and I think I'll be leaving the suspension stock for quite a while. Um, you don't, you don't I, need to do it. It's like, you know, when you bought your Miata, and well, any NC owner buys a Miata, an NC Miata, they're like, okay, we got to adjust this um, insane body roll. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but with this, 
you don't really have that. Go ahead and hit that flag button one more time. You'll put it in full end mode. You can feel the full suspension. So now every crack you can suddenly feel on the road. Well, Literally That is crack. crazy. Um, it is. That's so, kind of fun. <laughs> so my custom mode throws most things pretty aggressive like end mode, but I'll leave my suspension in sport. Yeah. Um, every, we'll, we'll show you guys the screen at some point, but basically engine tuning, rev matching, exhaust, suspension dampening, steering tightness can all be adjusted on a basically a three function scale of normal sport and sport plus. So um, awesome. And I've been blown away by how much it actually does. Yeah, it's not just a gimmicky thing. A lot of cars have adjustable drive mode things, and a lot of them are just dumb. You're like, why would you even do that? Yeah. And I think Hyundai does pay attention to both camps, the people who are very interested in sporty driving, but also people who are like literally touring their cars around the country. And we're even seeing that with like, I don't know, the, the whole electric car thing, I don't want to keep bringing it up in every video, but like they, yeah. There's a lot of flack for electric cars, just like, oh, you've lost the interesting pieces of driving. Then Hyundai is trying to keep some of that with their like Ionic 5 in and the Ionic 6 in that's coming out, which is awesome. They're not leaving the enthusiasts behind, but I still think you gotta have three pedals. You gotta and have three pedals. This, this it's, car it's a lot of fun. does that right. I don't think the Kona in has a manual option. The Elantra in, of course, does. Um, the Veloster in is just so special to me, so. It started it. I think the Veloster kind of started Hyundai's embrace of being quirky, which is hard to beat. Um, it's, it's part of what drew me in. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you don't know any history on the N from Veloster N, how it all got started, um, they hired BMW's lead engineer over the M performance division, which, if you've been into cars at all, you've heard of a BMW M car. Um, so, he got hired, brought over. The N stands for uh, a mixture of two circuits. This car was kind of designed to drive well on, where it was tested on, which is the Nankang circuit in South Korea. And then uh, we'll let George take the naming on the... <laughs> I mean, it's funny. It's the Nürburgring, but it's actually Nordschleife, which is the northern loop of the Nürburgring. And that's... I haven't done the South Korean circuit. I'd love to try it. But the Nürburgring, notably, is rough roads and parts of it. Like, it is technically a public road. It's a toll road. Um, so anyone could take any car on the Nürburgring, which is wild. And this car would honestly do so well on it because you have the suspension adaptability and I think that's pretty fun. And heck, it's been, it's been tested there. That's where, you know, where some of the initial testing for these vehicles were done. So I think the fact that it's the last year of the N, um, and it's this cool new performance division that Hyundai brought out to change their logo, change their branding, it'll always kind of have a special place. I agree. Yeah. Let's give some final thoughts. So George just gave his thoughts on uh, driving impressions. Jeff talked a little bit about uh, why he owns this beautiful car. And uh, yeah, so to, to summarize things, I think this car is a out of the box, great car for anybody who wants to feel like they're driving a modified car, but have it be relatively stock. Yeah. Um, as far as What's next for this car? We may do a whole video on build plans, but I guess really briefly, you're planning on doing kind of what? What do they call it in the in the Hyundai world? Well, you know, everyone hates stages, um, <laughs> but it's useful to know what you're doing. So, the stage one tune on this car very different than any of the other cars I've had. It's high pressure fuel pump, step colder plugs, an intake, and a tune. Um, yeah. That takes it from about 235 wheel. It's about 285 wheel, which I think will start to feel like the right number for that car. For sure. Um, and you have, you may or may not have all of those parts either in the mail or already here. <laughs> they might so, all be here by tomorrow. Yeah, I don't know. Who maybe. knows? We'll see. <laughs> um, so yeah, like I've said before, if you're interested in following this car and seeing Jeff and I do some stuff to it, um, definitely leave a like, leave a comment, let us know. Um, as far as other build plans, I mean, there's possible a potentiality, if you will, for all three of us to own Miatas again one day. Maybe soon. Who knows? Austin might get one, and I tell you guys what. If, if you convince Jordan to move out here so we can do videos, I will buy an NC the day he moves here. I, I will find one. <laughs> I'm holding him to it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know what else you want to say. <laughs> I was like, that's kind of the uncut there. Yeah.